there's also one point where, like, I literally don't think you can actually do anything about this. A seagull will swoop in, grab your head, and put it in its nest, and then you have to walk all the way up there, get your head back, and then, like, five minutes later, another seagull is gonna try. I don't remember if you can fight that one. You might be able to, but still. If memory serves me correctly, some of these levels are long, way longer than the first, and that in itself is fine, but you can't save in levels. That, again, in itself is fine, but combine the two, and it's really frustrating when you fail, or when you've spent, like, hours and hours, and, like, your thumbs are just, you know, practically bleeding, crying, begging you for a break, and you just have, like, and you don't even know how much time you have left. That's really irritating. But, yeah, some of the puzzles are pretty good. There's also one that, um is an homage to um, a sci-fi flick that I really, really like. I'm not gonna reveal which one it is. For anyone who doesn't know, or doesn't already know the puzzle and the movie, because I don't want to give anything away about either. What else did this mess up? How about the love interest? Yes, a skeleton needs a love interest. He was content with being a hero in the first one. That was it, you know. He he just wanted to prove that he could be the hero that history would record him as. He wanted to make sure that, you know, that the history books weren't wrong on this. I mean, so many games have this thing where, you know, you'll make history. This is one of the only ones I can think of that says you can correct history, you can make sure that they've got their facts straight. But no, this time he needs a love interest, and of course it should be a mummy. Yeah, and she's got blue skin for reasons I can't quite comprehend. I don't know, maybe it's supposed to be because of the whole mummification process. She's not a complete mummy, it's just like... I don't know if you can... I don't know if you can tell. That's her. She's got like some on her legs and arms. Part of it seems to act as a bra, I don't know. But yeah, in one of the first levels, you go into this pharaoh's tomb and you uncover her. For some reason, I'm pretty sure, you don't actually find a pharaoh. Also, one of the first, I think the first boss you fight, is like a dinosaur, you know, the, its skeleton, because it starts out uh, at a museum, because apparently the dead body of Daniel was now in a museum, because that, that's where Daniel wakes up, so he has to fight off this dinosaur skeleton. I don't think that completely makes sense. I mean, are those even bones? Did they even did they even have that back in 1890? Did they have full skeletons of dinosaurs on display? And and you also fight like there are these soldiers that was Zarek's soldiers in the first one, and they're for some reason here also. How does that make sense? I don't know what made them if they were like just created out of nothing from evil, or if they're like. Galomir's soldiers that he's, you know, turned into, but whatever, they act in the same way, exact same way, they have the same, this slow rifle. How does that make sense? If this is 500 years later, you can't just put in something from the first one and just expect it to make sense. The enemies in general are just frustrating and obnoxious. There's... At one point, you fight in a, like a carnival or traveling circus kind of thing, and you fight these huge, fat, bearded, psycho women. Okay, can, can we pick one and go with that? How, how many freak shows have the bearded woman also being, like, grossly obese? I mean, I'm not trying to insult uh, people who are overweight here. These women are just humongous. They're balloon, And they just keep running up to you and bouncing into you, shoving you away. So you have to run up to them and hit and then run away. It's just obnoxious. And every single enemy in the second game is way too powerful. In the first one, they were arguably relatively weak, but it was still challenging. You know, it was still fun to play. You didn't feel like you were just going through the motions of cutting them down. In the second one, they're really, really powerful. You have to constantly avoid nearly every single attack or you're not gonna make it. And here's the kicker. If they get you into a corner 
you might as well just reset the, the thing and start over because you basically don't have a chance of getting back out. Every time they hit you, you're like prevented from attacking them for one, maybe two seconds, and that's enough for them to attack again. You also can't go back to earlier levels and recharge your health and fill back up your energy bottles with the old, uh, I think they're called life fountains, you know, with the streaming um, energy from the magic that heals you because they go, once you've used one up, it goes away. If you've used one for two seconds, it'll have lost those two seconds forever. It does, they do not recharge, but the enemies reappear in the earlier levels. So if you play a level more than once, you'd better be ready to not take any damage whatsoever. So better make sure to you, that you get everything you wanted in that level the first time around, which is basically impossible because you don't know where it is the first time around. And also, how are you expected to do nearly perfect when you don't know how the enemies attack at first? And see, that brings me to another thing of the, you know, the hardcore gamer and all that. You're expected to, obviously, to play each level more than once and basically not save until the second or third or whatever playthrough because you're not going to do well on the first playthrough. Again, I'm sorry to me, that's a cheap way, a phony way, of trying to make the game seem longer. If you want us to come back to the game, make it fun. You know, give us unlockables. Don't force us to play it again just because it was too tough. Now, apart from the mummy, whose name I believe is Kira, you also have two other allies. Oh yes, he, he's got an entire team this time. Why not? So he's led by this professor who's like annoyingly, I think it's British, just something. You know, it's meant to be silly and funny, and I didn't laugh once. And he he's there to give you absolutely useless briefings that don't really tell you anything or do anything, tell you where to go next, because apparently Daniel now needs a master. And let's not forget, make weapons out of the chalices. I get the theological and scientific gains that might come from something like that, from using, you know, supernatural magic, you know, the souls of the evil collected in this supernatural cup with science, but it's so boring compared to, I mean, I'm not a fan of fantasy, I'm really not, there's, you know, there's a handful of fantasy films that I like, and apart from that, it's not my genre. I don't have a problem with people who do like it, but I'm not one of them, okay? And I still prefer the epicness of going to the Hall of Heroes, saying, you know, look at this, I actually isolate this many bad guys, I'm, you know, I'm starting to be one of you guys, and talking to the actual heroes. I find that way more exciting and interesting and engaging and something that makes you want to gain these chalices than just, oh, thank you for that, let me put this in this machine. Here's an item. I don't know what exactly it's going to be before I press this button, but here's an item. It might be gold, it might be a weapon. How about good lightning? I think that's actually one of them there, you know, instead of you know, getting it for the last level for this big fight. You just randomly get, oh, oh, here's a weapon now. I also have some other gadgets to tell you. Now, Bond, you'll want to... I mean, for crying out loud, is this for real? There is also a third helper, Casper. Okay, maybe not actually Casper, but he looks just like him, and he talks in this cockney accent, and he's the one who helps you save your game in level. What sense does that make anyway? I don't remember if when you load you're actually forced to be in that level and you're, then you have to use the pause menu to exit the level or if you just start outside the level. But seriously, why couldn't that just be, you know, in between the levels just like it was in the first one? 